we have professor sushant kumar mishra with us since morning and we are fortunate to uh, listen to his third lecture today uh, dr sushant kumar mishra has been working in the field of indian studies and european studies for last 25 years in this session i wanted to concentrate more on uh, what are the application aspects let's say for example in the morning i hinted about karuna ras which is uh, a pradhan ras a main ras in the indian context what happens to other places for example tragedy now is tragedy karun what do you say is tragedy karun the tragedy the greek tragedy the tragic where do you feel the greek tragedy would you find what a ras do you expect to find there karun ras are you sure no 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 tragic is different than tragedy tragedy is different tragedy is a genre is a kind of play written with certain parameters and the most important aspect of tragedy is that you feel that whatever you have done has been wrong so there is a sense of guilt involved yes exactly it comes from peripety and amartya yes exactly these are the terms uh hubris peripety and amartya these are the terms used that is there in the theory if you look into the theory now see if you find a rock in terms of ras karun in ramayan karun bhav karun ras is pradhan but is there any sense of guilt guilt in ramayan anybody is part though of course the main protagonists you have to take but is there any sense of guilt yes kai kai had a guilt ha huh? ravan also has guilt okay shupna ka has guilt ha huh? ab mujhe ye bataiye where is the guilt in that mention guilt and let's try to understand guilt in the context of tragedy in the context of all that you have said dashrath he had a sense of guilt huh yes that he had to do is it sense of guilt or is it sense of that helplessness to number 1 number 2 every action has whatever you do it has other repercussions which are beyond control beyond your own control i am trying to do something good for you see i am trying to explain certain notions but it may have other repercussions for you and for me now is that a sense of guilt Just think about it uh, our uh, Uh, that uh, sanskrit scholar she mentioned about uh, uh, an incident from uttar uttar ramcharit uttar part of that now look at that when you read the text ram doesn't vanish though that's how it is being presented but ram is here and he has to establish not the duties of husband but duties of a king so the duties of a king will impact the life the personal life of the king and those who are attached to the king as a human being okay is the purpose of his life what is the purpose of his life maryada purushottam along with that he has only eight colors he is not sampurna he is not sampurna because his 
he is going to establish whatever is the duty of the king. You will find many such stories. One story is one particular freedom fighter, different names, is uh, in the court and he receives a chit that his wife is dead. He keeps back the chit and he keeps on fighting the case. There are many such stories. Why he says, the, uh, the judge asks, oh, why, why do you do this? I uh, see, my wife is already dead or my son. There are various versions of the, these stories or X, Y, Z is already dead, but here I am fighting for somebody's life. So, it is part of my duty. Okay, see. Now, what is duty? The sense of duty. Again, you go back to the Greek. That's where I, uh, the session, in this session what I talked is that how these ideas impact the contemporary debate between pagan cultures and Abrahamic cultures. Abrahamic is a generic term being used in India. In Europe, they don't use this term, but let's say in India, since it is used, I will use it. When you say it is a notion of guilt, someone suffers if Urmila is left back. Is it a guilt or it is a duty that is being carried on by Lakshman and as well as by Urmila? If you carry on your duty, presently all of you are here, should I say that all of you have a guilt that you have left your families back, you have left your students in lurch somewhere, the students are not being attended to? It is not a guilt. You have come here for a purpose, you are going to enrich yourself. It is duty of the teachers to enrich ourselves so that we can give better to our students in some or the other way and that is the purpose. So every action is related to that. Tragedy does not happen. See, but still you see, again there is a, in the previous session Professor Bharat did mention about it. But there was a Greek drama. So, if you read Sophocles, you will find a certain ideas being floated. Aristotle, Plato, they are all being read nowadays. When you read those texts and you present them in a much later form, uh, Sir said that it is from 16th century, but it is not so actually. In European traditions, in English, yes, it is true, but in European traditions and in Latin also, you find a continuity in vulgar Latin. The texts are being, by vulgar Latin, what you call upper branch. The word vulgar here, upper branch, literally. That means when Latin is, uh, ha, ha, the language changes. So the language has changed and Latin has changed. And in a medieval Latin, which is often called vulgar Latin in many, in many forms. Uh, the similar plays are being presented and people are aware of the stories and they don't match the value systems that we want to create or we want to educate in the society. And that is where the conflict arises. That when we talk of Ras or Ras theory in India, in the Indian context, we understand that some kind of dharma, as I said in the morning also, is being established through that. Now, that dharma is never totally personal. That's why all the examples you could give is of personal, that okay, Ram is remorseful, is sad that Sita is being sent. But he has to do it because he is a king. Had he not been a king, then it is not there. So he has to choose. Either he be a king and do the duties of a king or take care of his personal life. Now this kind of dichotomy contradiction of opposites, as the Marxists would say. This is part of life. 
This is part of the dialectics of life and society. The dialectics is again a Marxist term. But this is how the society has grown all this. In every action, you will have a dialectics operating. You will have contradiction, contradictory forces simultaneously operating. And the consequences of each and every action will have some internal contradictions, whatever it may be. If you take care of your child, your parents are being neglected. You are yourself being neglected many times as mothers, as fathers. And that is not correct because you are neglecting your own body. So that is against the very basic nature of human kind or any why is human kind, any living being. But we are doing it and we do it. So every action has that. When you evolve from there, when you evolve to that process, then we enter into the domain of understanding the entire emotional process that has gone into the process of that has gone into the the, the, the dialectics, the internal contradictions that exist in our life. Now, for example, you can say they complement each other. That is where dialectics is there. Dialectics is they, in a way they are contradictory. At the same time, they complement, but in the process, there is suffering also. In the process, there is suffering also. And that is part of life. For example, since I mentioned Karuna in the beginning itself, so let's talk of Buddha. He suffered so much in order to attain the wisdom. He suffered so much that Sujata brings the food and serves Buddha and then he survives. You know the story very well. So suffering is part of that. Nearly by the essence of suffering, you have neither guilt nor you have Karun. But what you make out of that suffering Here you start evolving into these concepts. Now, how to implement these com concepts and how to understand? Let's say, for example, Karuna Dhwani. Dhwani was there, literally Karun. As such, it is not pathos, it is untranslatable in a way. But words used that are you being used are tender, pathos pitiable and exciting. This is also one of the translations. Okay? Otherwise, largely it is translatable. Okay? And we do have such terms as for example, uh, if you read Ramcharit Manas or similar such texts, do you know how Sita uh, addresses Ram? Karuna Nidhan. Karuna Nidhan. That's the term being used. Karuna Nidhan is a modern. Leader. See, look at how wife addresses Ram. Majority of the times. Most of the times, this is the term almost all the Almost. Not always, but uh, wherever it is, term is not being used. In the literature, we have a technique where where it is narrator's interference. Those who do literature, they know narratology, we do it. You will immediately sense a, in a surrounding area that there is a narrator's interference. Like whenever Nath is being used, narrator's interference you will find. Immediately you will find. So narrator's and author's interference also we find. Narrator, who is the narrator of uh, Ram Katha? Jatai. Or Kak Bhushundi. Kak Bhushundi is the one who narrates in Ramcharitmanas. Kak Bhushundi is the narrator. So, in, 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 in whenever you study a text, there is an internal narrator in the text, and that internal he is part of the text that we we do in literature. Kak Bhushundi is the one. 
So author's interference, you will find you uses other usages, but whenever Sita in the natural flow, she often terms Karuna Nidhi or Karuna Nidhan. These two terms are being used. Look at the notion of Ram itself. What does Ram do? It is the Sita's version of Ram. What happens? What kind of character is being construed there? Who is full of, who is ocean of Karuna? And all his life he has been waging wars to a large extent. But he is being addressed in a particular situation by the other character, the other main female protagonist of the story as Karuna Nidhan. You will have similar terms. Uttar Ramcharit Manas. Put Pak Prati Kasho Ramasya Karuno Rasa. Rasa Konsa hai? Ramaka Rasa Konsa hai? Karuna Ras. Bhavkuti. Many, many such. Such terms. Okay. Now, why this? Other authors also. Tulsi Das, Bal Kant. He says about Ram. So keval bhagatan hit lagi, param kripalu pranat anuragi. About Ram. Param kripalu pranat anuragi. This, these are the attributes of Ram. Now, Jehi Janapar Mamata Ati Chohu, the one who has a lot of love for his people, and people also have a, love, a lot of love for them, basically. Now, the last stanza of this Jehi Karuna Kari, Ek Bar Jinone Karuna Kar B, Inhana Kohu, Kohu means crow. Ek bar agar aapar karuna kar di, once if karuna has come from him, he will never do any crore, no anger afterwards. Again the notion, because he is karuna nidhan, continuously it will be. So with this notion, if you try to understand tragedy, if you try to understand any other notion of tragic or pathos, how will we understand? Because this is a debate that we get in contemporary times. Applications, contemporary times. Other aspects also I will bring it. From the pagan cultures itself right now I am bringing. Pathos is a category. So let me build from here first. Durga Satshati, many of you, I am in Bengal. It comes from which text? It's part of which Puran? Markandeya Puran. Exactly. So in Markandeya Puran, it comes. And you might have heard because nowadays on WhatsApp also they play. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu. Shanti Rupena Sansita, Shanti Rupena Sansita, Vidya Rupena Sansita, Matri Rupena Sansita, etc. etc. What are the words? Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu and look at the four. Shanti Rupena Sansthita, Daya Rupena Sansthita, Matri Rupena Sansthita and Shraddha Rupena Sansthita. Four words. Shanti, Shanti is Shama. Shama Kardena Jokat. Shama. Daya, Matri, Shraddha and Further, Sarvopakara Karanai Sadardra Chitta. Sada Ardra Chitta. Ardra, which is related to Karun. Do Chitta se Ardra. Sadardra Chitta. Okay? This is part of our ethos. Largely, so called Hindu ethos. I gave some examples from Buddhism. Take examples from Jain tradition in India, another pagan tradition. 
Indian pagan tradition. I have not gone to this, uh, to the Pali and Prakrit texts, but I take Arhat Darshan from Sarv Darshan Sangra, which is a text where, uh, where the, uh, the notion of giants are explained, what it says. Arhat Darshan, Ahinsa Vrat, part of Karun tradition, part of Karuna to all the living beings and non-living beings. Ahinsa Vrat, what do you do? Na yat pramad yogena jivit vya paro panam charanang, sthavaranang, charanang, jo bhi chalte hai, sthavaranang, chat, Tat ahinsa vratam matam. Yen ahinsa vrat kisko kaise hai? I, as per the translation, I will read the translation for you. Even if by, even if unconsciously or by chance or by mistake, if you don't harm any living or non-living being, then that is Ahinsa Vrat. They have two major concepts, Ahinsa and Satya in our Darshan. Two, two major concepts. Again, the notion itself is not to harm anyone. That means not only harming. Here, what you do? You identify yourself. Because if you are harming someone, living or non-living, you are harming yourself because that is an extension of your own self. Your Atma, that is extension of your Atma. You cannot cut or break Atma. So it is an extension of your own Atma to the entire world. And hence you do this. Ahinsa. Next comes Satyavrat. There also it is the similar concept. Priyang Pathyang Vachas Tabhyang Sun Ritang Shrutam Uchyate. Well, Priya, that is dear to me, Pathya, whatever may be not palatable now, but is palatable at the end, that is Pathya. So when you are not well, you are supposed to eat something. Again, the term comes from uh, uh, Ayurveda, the morning we discussed. That whatever is sukha, the whatever gives you the required balance in your body at the end, that is sukha. So, priya path and tathya, that is satya, tathya, these three. Priyang, pathyang, vachas, tathyang. When you are supposed to speak, taking care of this priya, whatever is good at the end and whatever is the fact, factual, then that is called sunrit. Sunrit, that is what we are supposed to speak. Even if you speak the facts, but you do not speak what is Priya and Patya, what is Priya and Hitkar? Patyam Apriyam Cha Ahitam, that is not a true word. Vahvani Sachi Nahi. That's how they take care of their Satya Vrat. This is Jain. And this is the entire tradition that we have got. The pagan traditions. Take some other examples. Since I talked of pagan traditions, who are the other pagans in the Eastern culture? Do you know? Persian in past, not today. Present day. Those who are leftovers. Now we are trying to rebuild on the basis of the leftovers. Huh? Uh, yes, these are pagans. That is true. But uh, their culture is, uh, the data is not available. Yes, these are by and large pagans but Islamized pagans. So they do not have their temples, etc. Not possible to, because that's all destroyed. Okay. 
they are the leftovers of uh, pre Islamic cultures. Uh, some aspects of their life remain attached to their pagan tradition. That is true. But they are more of a traditional. The pagan culture does not live there because that's all destroyed. No, you go to Japan. Of course, from India, you go to Japan, you take your Buddhism, Jainism via China, Korea, and all that. So that I am leaving because Buddhism I have already talked about. So I will not touch that. The other ones who are there, they are indigenous tradition. In Japan, you have a religion called Shinto. Now, Tao again related to India uh, because they have intense dialogue with Buddhism and all that. So in that process, they have evolved. But Shinto, Shintoism, you can read about it. They have their whole, whole stories, etc., same way as we have. And that is a living tradition. Same as Hindus are living tradition. So they also have a living tradition. You look at their notions. They will also have similar notions. Okay? For that I will uh, give you two examples. They have a notion of gods and goddesses. Okay? And there is a whole series of gods and goddesses, what we call nowadays with Christian terminology, we say like Hindu mythology, though mythology is the wrong word in the context, but they often say Japanese mythology. You can read that Japanese mythology. And in that context, they have a whole notion which again comes very close to our notion. As for example, though I say this, I don't know, maybe all of you are not so young. But many of my younger students or some of his students might be watching on uh, Netflix, etc., a series like uh, Death Note. Have you heard of this? I doubt if you'd have heard. It's not your generation. But the younger generations, uh, they do watch Death Note. You can check. Uh, ah, those the, the, the youngsters. They, they, they know about it. <laughs> so you, you know about it, Death Note. And there are many such series. There you have the notions of gods. Okay, you can take note of the death note. You may enjoy watching uh, if you are ready to watch that kind of graphics. Because Indians, uh, the young Indians, they do watch graphics, but uh, often uh, people slightly who are who have achieved thirties, they don't watch generally. So we should watch actually. Uh, but anyway, they have notions of death, for example. Something that we don't study in India. For example, notion of double death. Notion of identity without even the concept of suffering. Japanese culture has it. If you remember, there is a story, it has many versions, but uh, one of the uh, photographers during the Second World War uh, he takes a photo, it is well, you can find it on the internet also, uh, a small girls or boys as per various versions, younger brother has died, the younger sibling has died and that the elder one is carrying the younger, the, the younger sibling to be put on the funeral pyre for funeral. He asks that is, is that not heavy for you? You can put it here. He says, no, this is my brother. There are many versions of this story. That small guy, he waited until he uh, takes care of all the funerals of the child who is dead. The elder one is himself a child or herself a child. But the notion of identity in terms of sibling. doesn't make him feel the karun. For us, for the audience, it is karun. But in that notion, the karun is not there. And that is the difference. All the examples you gave. The notion of karun is not there in the life of Ram. The notion of guilt is not there. They are doing their duty. And without the sense of duty, that no, this is not my duty. This is the morals that I have to follow because 
this duty has been assigned to me this is my dharma this is my raj dharma that's all otherwise if you talk only of duty then clash of duty will be their husband's duty is different than the duty of the king so it is part of that dharma and for others it might be karun when you look at this japanese way of thinking then you are immediately reminded uh, that uh, valmiki is a story that only valmiki can feel the pain of ram but ram never says that i am in pain so when you actually don't feel the pain and you are in such a condition where you are doing your duty without feeling the pain inflicted upon you due to the situations and you happily accept those situations you enter into the realm of karun karuna bhav buddha feels the pain of that bird the bird doesn't tell buddha that i am in pain buddha feels the pain inflicted upon himself as if he is inflicted he is uh, being hit by the arrow when he looks at that bird and hence he goes to serve he doesn't go to serve for any notion of charity he doesn't do any favor to the bird and that's where the notion of charity is different from the notion of karuna that we have in pagan cultures that's why i gave you some examples in japanese you have plenty of examples but i will not simply give. the notion of shinigami it's one god there are several such gods i will not go into that but you see the difference the, the abrahamic concept is of charity this is not and buddha is not doing any charity to the bird buddha is one he is identifying with the pain of that particular bird and hence he goes to serve the bird we have similar words also i give you an example maybe here also in many places we often have a government sponsored scheme animal care centers we have animal care centers what is the hindi translation in hindi we could not translate the word care so when you say take care you can't translate it the hindi translation of animal care center all the places that i found is some version of pashu seva kendra what is the difference between care and seva see no okay nursing that's fine if you try to translate but seva is not nursing seva i give you a common use of that word when a bird takes care of its eggs what word do you use normally indian languages koi murgi apne ande ko sev rahi what is that sev rahi uski seva kar rahi koi maa apne bacche ki seva karti aap batai when a bird takes care it is not doing any favor to the child it is not doing any favor to the egg wo seva kar rahi hai it has no notion of taking care as if there is a non identity between the two ye ye to uska uska dharma hai uska instinct hai bird ka wo instinctively kar rahi hai same as we often say that what is one of the uh, definitions of mammal is that the mammals take care of their children nurse their children whatever word we may use ye jo notion of identity hai and in that context again you bring the ras theory the notion of identity aur maine ek ras ko dekha ke hai yahan pe even the notion of love is the same and this is what you find in the pagan cultures non pagan cultures the other cultures will not have that notion of identity so the tradition about which we are talking today has this 
aspect of identity and identification of self with the other self, myself with the other self. And you, we have terms like that. For example, good morning, how do you translate? Nowadays I see Suprabhat, Shubha Prabhat, etc., etc. But what is morning? In India, nobody says Indian tradition. Either we say nothing, we smile at each other, or you ask, how are you? If you are all good, then is good. The purpose is not that I wish you a good morning or a happy birthday, but if you are fine, the day is fine for you. We don't say anything. Or the formal words that are used, Namaste, Namaskarang, what is the word? Have you seen Japanese doing Namaste? But that is Nama, Naman. That's, that's a literal version. The Angic representation, limbs representation of Namaste, Aap Naman kar rahe. Vegan cultures will have that. So you see the externalized agency and its involvement. In the morning I said the scientific way of understanding it and the religious way of understanding it. In India or Indian ethos or the ethos about which we are talking, the notion of understanding feelings is not on the basis of any external agency but it is from inside. So when we try to take to understand rasa or the tradition of Natya Shastra, we have to understand that in our literary production, all types of literary productions, including the audio, visual and visual literary productions, including simply audio, even the music, etc. The externalized notions of emotional expression is not valued so much as the notion that is coming from within us. The system has to appeal me and get the pleasure from inside us. Now with this, I will again give you another example. So many of you would have read George Bernard Shaw. Some of you are, are you from uh, literature? Some of you? No one, some of you. So George Bernard Shaw, uh, even others should read. If you are from uh, uh, science background specifically, you should read George Bernard Shaw's one play at least. Uh, uh, that play, Arma Virum Kwe Kano, Arms and the Man. Arms and the Man. You see? Yesterday you had on uh, with a brigadier sir, there two uh, businessmen are talking and they are talking about the kill ratio of the gun that they have sold. How many people a gun can kill? So the two businessmen are discussing that. This is part of that play. The, it's a sequence in that play. That play goes back to Enid's Virgil. Enid is a text by Virgil. Pagan, but almost on the verge of being Christianized. When in India we say, there they don't say similar as for example, what happens there in that play by Virgil. Uh, the queen, there is a Dido is the name of the queen. She falls in love with a particular hero and that hero finally leaves. Uh, he says that, no, I have to go to Africa, whatever, to Carthage for this duty and that duty. She is not supposed to fall in love because her husband was dead. So she was in a way, in modern terms, she was a widow. So as per the morals of that Roman society, she was not supposed to fall in love again. But she does fall in love. And then later the hero leaves. What she does? She kills herself. Enid, A-E-N-I-D or E-N-I-D, two spellings are there, you can read about this story. Now what happens? When the narrator sings, the narrator doesn't sing of the pain of the woman. The author doesn't sing of the pain of the woman, but the first line itself says, 
that I sing of the arms and the man. Arma virumque. I sing of the arms. And arm has double meaning. One is this arm. But bravery in that sense. So I sing of what? Arms and man. Veer. It's the same word. It's the Indo-European word. Veer. That we have is virumque. It is a Latin word also. So veer means man. So I sing of arms and the men. The story is about the woman falling in love who finally commits suicide in contemporary times. If I use contemporary word, she kills herself. But the narrator or the author doesn't sing that. Because the Karuna Bhav is not there. So the recensions are different. We have to understand our society and the value systems of our society as different from other cultures through the categories of understanding emotions because cultural values are closely related to our emotions and expressions of emotions. If I have to respect my guest, I have to express the emotion of respect in a particular manner. I cook a different kind of food. I dress myself a bit differently, etc., etc. So the expressions of emotions have to be understood. And that is where the categories of Natya Shastra, its entire tradition, help us. So whenever you study or you look at other cultures, this is one important parameter to evaluate what you are looking at. In the morning, there was a question by Sir that why we are not getting Oscars. And I had said the criteria of evaluation. Our criteria of evaluation is different. You will not find any movie with pathos being awarded Oscars. And pathos is again too light a term in comparison to what we have. The notions are of charity. World view is different. So, the criteria is different. What you look at is different. Another example I will give you. In contemporary times, many of you I met during lunch are from private universities and science backgrounds. You are asked to have a patent. Every thesis is supposed to find something new. How much new ideas will you find? What is new? You have to define that. What is education? You have to define that in that context. If you confuse these two categories, and often that is being confused, what happens in India? Education, as related to employment. Now, we talk a lot of education 4.0. Uh, there is a lot of talk on education 4.0, etc., etc. Nowadays, education the um, to create the employable graduates, all this. Now, education, look at this notion that you are employable. And the other notion that common people would say, Are yaar, wo to padha likha admi hai, wo aisa kaise bol raha hai? Padhe likhe admi ki bhaasha to aisi hoi nahi sakti. Now that is not, it has nothing to do with employment. So a certain behavior, behaviorist notion of education, that education brings change in our behavior, the very basic definition of education, but there is a contradiction. What kind of behavior are we talking about? Is it the behavior where I respect you as I demand respect from you or it is my employable behavior in terms of my skills. We have to ask these questions. Relevant questioning and trying to find relevant answers as per the requirements of our emotional attachments are very important. If this attachment is not there, if this emotional aspect is not brought into, about which in terms of aesthetics also we have talked. 
the Indian tradition, in the tradition of Natya Shastra, then, as often is said, that science becomes only a tool of creating nuclear warheads. That we cannot do, as per this tradition. And that's where, if you want to dissect, the, as per the applicational tools, the tradition of Natya Shastra provides you those applicational tools, not only to dissect, not only to understand the literary texts, but the cultural texts also. And you can see that in contemporary times, even literature departments, they are engaged in similar researches, where research on culture and cultural aspects are very important. And they are important anyway, if you construct a house, the cultural aspects are very important and they all have to be understood by the emotional bonding that people have and that is where the, like, these categories that we have talked about uh, help us. You see, how not compassionate not mercy, not charity, but how you relate to the emotions of the others. If you relate to the emotions of Tilak or Bindi, as women put it, the feminine version of it, if you look at the emotions with which a woman puts Sindur wherever, okay, or a man puts Tilak, if you don't look at, if you don't identify with that, then for you that is demonical. Demonical, daimonic. What is daimonic? Plato was supposed to have a daimon always here. There was a small daimon because Plato used to speak unpleasant truth. So they would always have it's a metaphor as I understand. So he used to tell you uh, anything that you may not like to hear, but it is true. What he says is fact, but he will tell you straight to your face. Would have avoided that, but he used to tell this. So he was supposed to have a diamond, and that's where he was uh, charged also that he's corrupting the youth. You see the point? Corrupting the youth, the charge for which he was given hamlock. Same happens with the tilak also. If you don't emotionally identify yourself with that, now if I make a movie and I don't emotionally identify with your dress sense, whatever be your dress sense, and if I have the power, then whatever I can do in that situation, I will try to do it. So it is the emotional bondage, and that's where we have to understand that though there is a larger framework of Indian uh, theatre in our movies also, however, Majority of the movies take their storyline and ethos as well as sequencing uh, of uh, the montage or other techniques that they use. They all have come from a different civilization. The, 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 um, uh, as uh, the Canadian thinker says, that medium is the message. Marshall McLuhan, so he's a media thinker from Canada. Medium is the message. So the medium itself has certain inherent biases. Hence that will happen. First you have to identify it. If you want to correct, let's not correct anyone. The notion is not to correct. The notion is to put it in correct perspective. Put it in proper perspective where it belongs to. That's all. We have to raise our emotional quotient and also you have to parallelly draw the other line which may be larger than that. You, we cannot take the forms from the West, the advantage, from, uh, the advantage of technology from the West and the notion of democracy from the West and then we will say that we are going to correct them. No, that's not possible. We have to come up with our own understanding, our own category, and that's why, see, all through my lecture, I have not referred to any of the secondary texts. The secondary texts are misleading. Read the original texts, 
try to understand it from the context. After that, you try to understand that the texts in the perspective in which they have to be studied. If I have to understand Karun, I cannot understand it by translating as pathos. That's why I gave only one example. Veer is another example. What is the notion of Veer? Veer, I have used the word here also. But Veer, I could not touch. That part I have cut down. But only one notion of Karun. And I have given you examples from day to day life. And that will have an impact on everything. In our movies, you find a lack of Karun in the contemporary times. Because they are not based in a medium which comes from this culture. And that's where that becomes a director's medium. Here, everything is actor's medium. If Ravan is acting in a particular way, it is because of certain situations. The notion of guilt is not there. Just ask you first of what is notion of guilt. I think today morning somebody asked about Shurpanakha. And I, what did I say? That Shurpanakha, if Ram is so lovable or if Krishna is so lovable, why should not Kaliya or why should not Shurpanakha fall in love? What is wrong with the love of Shurpanakha? Nothing wrong with the love of Shurpanakha. But every civilization will respond to it in its own manner. Because these are all basic human tendencies. The questions are the same. There are different ways to answer it. Okay, like Nachiketa, what happens to the story of Nachiketa? His father is conducting yagya, etc. And he says, Ki aapne inko itna diya, unko utna diya, to kyon de rahe to nahi, jo meri priya vastu hai, to mein aapko priya hun? He's the son, he says, yeah, to, mujhe bhot, to aap mujhe kise denge? Now the story goes, ab aap mujhe kise denge? And from there he starts. And then finally he goes to Yamaraj to ask the, the entire debate of Nachiketa and between Nachiketa and Yam. So the story comes from there. Now basic questions will be same, but the responses are different. And the responses of pagan cultures by and large, you try to understand differently. This is the dimension that I am trying to tell you that whenever possible, please read the original text. From Indian text, you can read original. But parallelly, look at the other pagan cultural texts also, that how they are different. Then you will have the reference points and we have one series of categories in the text that we, are, we have discussed today. You may find similar other categories.